Hey guys, I'm Macy and I'm gonna show you how to identify plants today. I've taken an intro to plants class once and uh, bought some identification books recently. So, if that doesn't qualify me to teach you a few things, I don't know what does. We're gonna break it out um, using some of the terms that you're gonna need to know if you're gonna use a dichotomy and uh, dichotomy, 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 however you say that word, a botanical key to identify your plants. Let's get cracking. When we talk about plant identification, what are we talking about? Um, when we want to identify a plant, we're trying to figure out its name, right? We want to know what it's called. And so we might know one of its common names, the English daisy, for example. Ooh. Nice, I got all the basil leaves and everything. And we're probably looking for the scientific name. The scientific name is like a Latin binomial, so it's two Latin words. The first word uh, refers to the genus of the plant, um, or like a bigger grouping of plants with similar characteristics. And the second name is more specific to the species. Sometimes there's a third word for the subspecies. If you have a plant in mind that you want to identify for this video, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, take note of these few things. You're gonna wanna know its habitat. So where is it growing? Um, how much sun does it get? How much shade does it get? Uh, what kind of soil is it in? You're gonna wanna take a note of the trunk. Um, is it textured? Is it smooth? Is it peeling? Um, are there spines on it? Is it growing straight up and down or is it twisted and gnarly? You're gonna wanna look at any leaves that are on the plant. Um, leaves all have unique shapes, so it could be useful just to take a few pictures or sketch out the shape. Uh, we'll go over leaf shapes um, in a little. Um, also note like if it's smooth or hairy or if it has nettles on it um, or if it's thick or thin. Um, take note of the flowers on the plant, what color they are, um, how they're arranged on the plant, where on the plant they are, and, um, oh wow, there's a bee on there. But yeah, flowers, take note of their color, the arrangement on the plant, and their reproductive systems, which we'll also touch on briefly. And then also take note of any fruits or seeds that are on your plant. Uh, seeds are often one of the best identification methods. Seeds are often one of the best ways to identify plants. Um, unfortunately, seeds aren't always present, but knowing what shape they are, if they're soft or hard, um, how big they are, are good keys onto if we have the right plant. So with that out of the way, we can move on to plant shapes, um, or rather plant morphology. Um, plant morphology refers to like the structure of plants um, their shapes and all that, and I'll give you lots of examples, don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, plant morphology is what you're going to need to know if you're going to be using a botanical key to identify your plants. So, e. Up next, we're going to be talking about the different kinds of leaf shapes. So right here, that little English daisy I pulled up earlier, and get a good look at it. The leaves, how they're coming out here. These are spoon-shaped leaves because they look like little spoons. And uh, you know, you might say that they're ovate shaped too, which wouldn't be entirely wrong, but it wouldn't be um, the most accurate description either. Um, leaf descriptions are always up to interpretation, which can be really confusing. Um, another great example of leaves is right here behind me. We have the western coltsfoot right here. The little leaf is almost as big as my hand. And this is a palmate shaped leaf. It's called that because it looks like a palm with fingers on it. Another qualifier that the western coltsfoot has too is kidney shaped, which refers to like this little shape right here when the plant kind of looks like a kidney in that it goes in somewhere around the stem and comes out into like a bulbous -y shape like that. So this is, would also be considered um, kidney shaped. Another example of palmate is maple, which there's your example right there of the palmate shaped late. There's your example right there of the palmate shaped maple leaf. Right. 
to normal there. Eh. Uh, let's see, what else do we have around there? Oh, look at that. So right here we have a Himalayan blackberry leaf. And this is a great example of the compound palmate because the leaves are actually separate here. As you can see, all coming out centrally at the same spot. Yeah, so compound palmate. And then we have lance shaped too, which any of these blades of grass would be a good example of a lance shaped leaf. Another example of the lance-shaped lance leaf is this guy right here. It's a little bit thicker, but uh, you know, it's not rounded enough to be a spoon. Pretty much just almost straight up and down, but coming to a point. Um, so yeah, more examples. What else do we have? Right here, here we have a dandelion leaf. A dandelion leaf is pretty lance-shaped, um, long and coming to a rounded point, but still a point. And we would also call it toothed because of the little grooves here that kind of look like teeth. We also have a couple examples of ivy growing right here behind me. Um, the ivy is palmate, even though there's less nodes. This one's kind of an irregular shape, but it goes to show that not all leaves are gonna look the way they're supposed to look when you're identifying. There's variance always. But yeah, little, little baby palm shape. So this right here is one of the most common leaf shapes. This would be um, ovate leaf shape right here, um, also called like egg shaped. And you also might consider it elliptical. So those are three very similar leaf shapes. Here's another one right here. This one's more elliptical. Let's see, uh, But it has a little bit more of a point to the tip of it. So I would say this one's more ovate. Um, the next thing you're going to want to notice when looking at the leaves are the arrangement. Are they um, alternate or are they symmetrical? These ones are symmetrical because you can see the leaves come out parallel to each other on each side as it goes up. And this guy's the same way. The two leaves come out symmetrical and this is actually splitting into another set of two leaves. Oh. Those leaves are considered to be opposite of each other. Another really common way that you'll see the leaves on the stem is just like we did on the daisy. This is a uh, basil. Um, is how you describe these leaves. It's like kind of like a whorl on the ground. Just uh, the leaves com coming right out of the ground and the plant kind of coming out of them. See if I can find an example of alternate. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't find any alternate. So, so those are a few different examples of leaf shape and um, I showed you basil and opposite. Also be looking out for alternate leaves which is just when the leaf alternates on this side, and then it comes out on this side, and then on this side. That's alternate, it's pretty simple. So now you know the different leaf shapes and how they might appear on the stem. Exciting stuff. So without further ado, I'll take you on a little plant walk and show you some examples. All right, so there is a lot to identify right here. We'll start up close and work our way out. This right here is an English daisy, or a common daisy, one of the most commonly referred to plants as a daisy. It has several medicinal uses. It's usually used as a tea. It could also be turned into a tincture. 
Uh, it's distinctive by its single white flower per root system, or rather basil leaf whorl, which you can see down here at the base of the flowers, these little spoon shapes that it grows out of. So yeah, the common daisy with its spoon-shaped basil leaves, about three to six inches tall. Uh, the next thing I see are these beautiful western colts foot. The leaves vary greatly in size from the younger leaves to the older leaves which can grow to be about the size of a dinner plate. They are kidney shaped and palmate and toothed. Um, also notably the underside is really fuzzy and soft, kind of like lamb's ear. Not quite as soft. These have a lot of great medicinal benefits too. They help with respiratory. You can harvest their roots for tinctures or tea or decoctions. And the leaves are great for tea or smoking. So what else? Not the prettiest example, but right here we have some Himalayan blackberry. Um, some ovate shaped leaves that are compound. Um, obviously spikes on the stem. And somewhat soft leaf. I forget what kind of tree this is, but that's a tree. All right, right here we have cleavers, this like hella sticky plant. Um, I read that spiritually it's good for treating clinginess and partners or anyone who's clinging to you or if you seek to be less clingy, you can harvest the leaves and make a tea. These cleavers, actually give a great example of what a world leaf looks like. So a whorl is when the leaves come out all around the stem, just like that. So they whirl around it. We also, we also have miner's lettuce right here. These are just the little guys popping up. Um, with a really unique shape. Um, these little, like, varied shape in the leaves, but ovate, egg-shaped, spoon-shaped, or um, definitely spoon-shaped are ways that I would describe those leaves. We have the fern. Friendly fern. Oop, I can't go any further. I found poison oak. We have a dandelion. This guy's kind of sad. I'll find a better one for you. But they have arrowhead shaped leaves or lance shaped leaves that are toothed. Uh, many of them are double toothed, which as you can see, the teeth have teeth on them. And they, the leaves are also basil leaves because they're coming out of the ground and the plant grows up out of it. So yeah, hopefully those were some good examples and you felt like you learned something. Hey, what's going on, babe? Oh, I'm just chilling, was waiting on you to get here. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. It really is a big deal to me. Um, if you're one of my 17 subscribers, you're awesome. Thank you. When I hop onto my YouTube analytics and I can see you on there watching my videos, it feels so So thank you. If you're not one of my 17 subscribers, hit the subscribe button and join. Um, also, don't forget to like and comment on the video if you liked it and let me know what you'd like to see more. Alright guys, have a great day. Bye. Nah, and when we hear that it's the laws, now nah, we